When I myself was in junior college, I was always so deep in despair, and as such, one of my hobbies was to browse the internet for any sort of personal recount of other people's experiences. But surprisingly enough, I could never really find anything too specific, and I don't even know why. Is it because people don't want to sell out their school, or is it because they want to permanently shove those traumatic memories to the back of their mind? Because if that's the case, then I totally understand. However, I felt that the internet was lacking severely of encouragement or motivation boosters to actually help me tie up with the rough times. Rather, it was really just riddled with depressing experiences that made me feel even worse. And so I am here to help you better deal with the arduous journey that you're currently on. And this video will be about having a direction and knowing just what the hell you're doing in junior college, because it is just that easy to lose sight of whatever you're working for when you're busy drowning in a bunch of tests and never-ending tutorial homework. Just a disclaimer: I'm not your straight-A student. But it's because I never really heed my own advice, plus I was unaware of some really important information, and I learned things the hard way. All right, so for some reason, I was completely aimless in JC. I am the type to commit myself heavily to my CCA, and I was struggling with my subjects so much that I didn't even know what my results were supposed to look like. I mean, sure, we get fed all those examples of straight A students, but let's be real: not everyone can get straight A's because it's a bell curve system, and we all have different strengths. And not all of us are hardcore muggers, and some of us have already begun to majorly regret our subject choices. But if you have chosen the express route to university, your simple purpose is ultimately to get into university. And don't you dare forget that, because if you can't survive the first year, let alone the second year, you're gonna have wasted both time and brain space. It's do or die for A's, so just do it. Moving on to the really important stuff, the two things that you must absolutely look at will be number one. Your university rank points, and number two, your indicative grade profile. As you probably know, you have both H1 and H2 subjects. H2 being the more advanced of the two. After receiving your A level results, your marks would have been converted to grades along the infamous bell curve, and every grade is equivalent to a certain number of points under the university rank point system, or URP. I'm just gonna call it URP. So, for example, for your H2 subjects, if you scored an A, that would be equivalent to 20 rank points. If you scored a B, that would be equivalent to 17.5 rank points. For a C, you get 15, and from there it goes lower. As you can see, your H1 subjects have a much lower weightage than your H2s, but of course they're still important. The maximum points you can get is 90. After your A's. You will be desperately trying to get yourself into a university. While local universities such as the very well-known NUS, NTU, SMU, SUTD, and the new SUSS, formerly known as Unison, have really high global rankings, what this actually means is that they're way harder to get into. Therefore, you need to check their requirements to have a goal, especially if you don't have the means of going to a private university or overseas. For a more general gauge of whether you can get into a course, you can refer to your URP or or URP. I received some sort of a list from my friend. I don't know how accurate it is, but I'll leave it in the description below just for reference. Most local unis are really looking at around 70 rank points and up. The second most crucial thing is your indicative grade profile, which is something more concrete that you can refer to. An IGP consists of three H2 grades followed by a slash, then H1 grade. It doesn't include your general paper or project work grade, but those two subjects are assumed to be well done, single tier. If you take three H2s and one H1, that H1 grade will be reflected in your IGP. However, if you take four H2s, your let's say worst H2 subject will be converted and reflected as a H1 grade. So, if you ask me, there really isn't a point in taking four H2s unless you want a scholarship or if you're really striving for excellence in academics, because it seriously does take a permanent toll on your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. 
Now that you know what goes into your IGP, you need to compare your personal IGP to those of the university courses. These can be easily found by googling them online or going to open houses, and they do change with every incoming batch, so don't think that you can definitely secure a place if you can just barely scrape through the entry grades. Just as an example, here's the list of IGPs for NUS. You'll be able to see the 10th and 90th percentile. The 10th percentile means the grade profiles of the bottom 10% of the previous cohort, and likewise the 90th percentile means the grade profiles of the top 10% of the previous cohort. If you scored straight A's, well, you have nothing to worry about. However, if you didn't, you can take a look at the 10th percentile grade to know what are the minimum requirements of entering a particular course. So basically, you shouldn't rejoice knowing you have met the university's minimum requirement, but rather you should be aiming for at least the 10th percentile grades. But but but, then doesn't that mean that even if I scored lower than the 10th percentile, I can still have a chance to get into the course because there are people that are the 9th percentile and below? Uh, I mean, sure, you can look at it that way, but people that belong to that category usually have barely missed the 10th percentile results or have entered the course through direct admissions, which is another big topic, so I won't be going into that here. So be sure to check out the IGPs of whatever courses you have in mind. In conclusion, different universities have different requirements that also change every year. So be sure to strive for better grades if you aren't doing well for your current tests. Go for consultations or tuition, or go ask your really smart friends for help. If this video helped you to be clearer about your purpose of life, feel free to share it with your friends so you're not lost sheep in a desert. Wow, what a weird analogy. If you have any other questions about JC, you can leave them down below, and if need be, I can make a video on it. Hope you stay sane and motivated and all the best for your A-levels. <laughs>